sometimes Linux just sucks. So if you saw my post yesterday where I said I was going to take the day off, yesterday was a holiday here in the U.S., and I decided to take the day off. And in that post, I said that I was going to do a video today on AV Linux. And that was the plan. I got up this morning ready and raring to go. I was going to make this video. I was going to work on getting ahead for once. But the best laid plans, right? So Linux sometimes just hates my guts. And I don't know why. And I understand that some of this is probably going to be user error. But I really need to rant just for a little while today about my Linux experience over the last 12 to 14 hours. Everything that I've tried on Linux for the last 12 to 14 hours has just completely failed. So when I got up this morning, well, let's back up just a little while. Over the last four or five days, I've had a problem with my computer where the screens will not go to sleep. Usually when that happens, that means there's an application that's keeping them awake. A lot of times it's Steam. Like Steam won't let your computer go to your monitors go to sleep for whatever reason. I'm used to that, but it wasn't Steam. I didn't have Steam running. And even if I did have Steam running, like sometimes Steam won't actually close, it'll like close to the system tray or whatever the hell, and that's keeping your screens open. I rebooted my computer several times and I was still having the same problem. So I've been trying to troubleshoot that over the last couple days. And I've been completely unable to find out what's keeping my screens on. I thought I had it narrowed down to ZimWiki, but that's not actually the case. It just happened to be that I did finally get my screens to go to sleep a couple times and then they stopped doing it even though it wasn't ZenWiki. It's it, it's a weird thing. I thought maybe it was Polybar because I'm using a really old Polybar config and they've changed the Polybar configuration details now. So I thought maybe I was getting errors in Polybar and you know so I killed off all my Polybars and I still can't get my screens to go to sleep. I even used a different window manager thinking that maybe there was something wrong with i3. It did actually allow my screens to go to sleep for a couple times and then it went right back to not letting my screens go to sleep and it's not that big of a deal like i can press the buttons and just turn my monitors off it's not something i want to do but you know it's something that i could do if i had to so i just figured this morning i would continue troubleshooting that but when i got to my computer none of my flat packs would load none of them like seriously not even like load a minute later or something like that they wouldn't load at all and you know i was like what the hell? Like nothing happened overnight. Like, like I, it's not like my computer automates updates or anything like that. I do all that stuff manually, so I don't know how, how from last night to now, any, all my flat packs just completely stopped working. It doesn't make any sense, but it did. So I did a little bit of troubleshooting and tried to like run. Like you can run your flat packs from the terminal using like a convoluted command, and nothing. It just sits sit there and hang. Like there was no output at all, which is really weird. So long story short. I decided I was going to hop. Well, no, I didn't decide I was going to hop. I just decided I was going to reinstall Arch Linux. When I installed Arch Linux before, I used the Arch Linux GUI, ISO, and I've used that a couple times, and it's usually pretty good. But this time, I didn't want the Plasma stuff, and that was the only ISO I had. I didn't really want to have to download another ISO. So I decided I was going to use the Arch Linux, just vanilla Arch Linux ISO. I had one of those lying around. I burned it to a, or put it on a USB key. And I used the brand new Arch install script that comes in on every Arch Linux ISO. And the install was successful. It worked really well. So I spent my day getting Arch Linux set back up on my computer. And everything that I've touched, everything that I've touched has broken on Arch Linux today for stupid reasons. So during my attempt to get my setup back up and running, I tried to get my poly bars working. That took forever because the way i have my polybar configs set up they all have their own configuration files for each theme i gotta fix that because that's a pain in the ass and the reason why it's a pain in the ass is because on this new install of arch linux the names of my monitors changed <laughs> like i don't know why but now all of a sudden instead of dp-2 and hdmi-2 they're now displayport-1 and hdmi a one which is just why do they change it doesn't make any sense at all Especially considered they were both Arch Linux, right? They, they both were Arch Linux. It doesn't make any sense why they'd be different, but they were. So I spent the morning getting all that stuff, you know, up and running and finally got Polybar working and all of my configs in the proper places and reinstalled Nerd Fonts. And that takes for freaking ever because I never seem to remember to just to keep Nerd Fonts on a disk somewhere. And so I always have to redownload them. And it's like 10 gigabytes of fonts that I have to download. It's really dumb. It took forever. 
And then I started installing software. And that's where I've been having some problems. So I decided I was going to use the Flatpak version of OBS. So I downloaded the Flatpak version of OBS. And that, ins that downloaded fine. It took a while, but it downloaded fine. And it opened up fine. But it wouldn't set up. Like it, you, Every time I tried to go through that little wizard that comes up when you first launch OBS, it froze. Like it completely froze. And I don't know why. Like it wasn't doing anything other than going through the wizard. And it froze. I ended up having to use Xkill in order to kill it. So I decided, well, you want to, I will just download it from the Arch repo. But then I remember that the Arch repo version of OBS is basically bare bones. Like it's completely bare bones. It has none of the good stuff that OBS has to offer over like the last 10 versions. Uh, they don't compile it that way. You're, sp you're just kind of limited to what you can do with that version of OBS. So I decided I was going to install one of the versions from the AUR. And the AUR ones that have all the good stuff in them take literally forever to compile like i waited an hour and a half for that thing to compile and it still never got done i gave up like i was done with it i need like i wanted to make that video like i was told you i was going to make the av linux video today and get it uploaded and you know still around 7 30 or so this evening i figured well you know i still can i can still get this done and get it edited and upload before midnight but that was before i sat there for an hour and a half waiting for OBS to compile. So I was like, screw this. I'm going to try the Flatpak version again. The Flatpak version finally decided it was going to work. That's what I'm using now. And, uh, you know, so I was like, it's nine o'clock. Maybe if I rush, I can still get the AV Linux thing to work, but I need Audacity because I always record my audio separate from OBS. So I always have two recordings of the audio and it's just easier doing it that way because then I can just edit it right in Audacity move the audio raw file out and then combine them in Caden live when I do the video editing later on. I've, I've done that basically since I started editing my videos. So I downloaded the Flatpak version of Audacity. Now I always use the Flatpak version of Audacity because I need a version of Audacity that's higher than 3.0 because a lot of my old projects in Audacity use the new file format, which is something that was introduced in 3.0. So I can't use the audacity that's in the arch repo because that's still 2.4 which is like a pain in the ass but whatever like i understand why they did it but i just like i need a new new version so i used the flat the i downloaded the flat pack and it wouldn't launch i launched it from the terminal and there was no output i launched it from rofi and i got the splash screen like the little audacity logo splash screen and it sat there for three minutes and did nothing absolutely nothing so i had to kill it with htop and uh, i was like fine i'll uninstall the audacity version and i just i'll in, just because i want to get a video done tonight so i'll install that arch repo version that is at version 2.4 got that installed started up fine it would not for the life of me recognize my microphone like it had no access to this microphone at all it wasn't even showing the, in the drop down list like it showed pipe wire which is stupid because i don't have pipe wire installed at all i'm using pulse audio the only microphone that it would actually catch would be the webcam microphone, which would actually, it did actually work, but nobody wants to listen to a video with me with that microphone. It's horrible. So I, that's where I gave up on even considering doing the AV Linux one. So I just decided I was going to do this. And right now I'm d recording all my audio here in OBS. So most of this was just so I could rant for a little while. But the bottom line is that sometimes Linux sucks. Like seriously, sometimes Linux just sucks. And for me personally, and I don't know if this is for anybody else, but usually when one thing goes wrong, everything seems to go wrong when it comes to Linux. And I don't know why, like it doesn't really make sense that it does that. Like seriously, when something, why did I wake up this morning and have none of my flat packs open up? That doesn't make any sense. Like flat pack doesn't automatically update as far as I'm aware. I mean, that'd be pretty silly if it did like, and I just didn't like know but I don't think it does. So why overnight did my flat pack install just completely bork? It doesn't make any sense. And that was kind of like the tipping off point because that led me to reinstalling Arch and apparently Arch just hates me. So I'm at the point now where I'm just don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna hop again tonight and it's probably, the, the problem with that that idea is that yeah sure i'll hop to mx linux or i'll hop to ubuntu or i'll hop to whatever joe schmo's distro and i'll use it for 
hours. I was going to say a couple of days, but yeah, I doubt that it's going to last a couple of days. And, you know, I'll try to, like, uh, let's just say I went with MX Linux. I've tried MX Linux before. I love that distro. It's one of my favorite distros. But the problem is, it's all the software is like, completely outdated. And not a big deal for most things. Like, it's probably really stable that way, right? But there are certain things where I need the newer version of software. And it's kind of a pain in the ass to get on a Debian-based distro. It's not something that I couldn't work around, but I like the AUR, man. Like, like I'm just every time I have to jump through hoops in order to get the latest version of Python, I'm like, why can't I just use Arch? Like, I want to use Arch. And today is a good reason why you don't use Arch Linux unless you're, like, super lucky or something. I don't know. I've been daily driving Arch Linux now, or a version of Arch Linux, like an Arch-based distro, for two or three years. And... The vast majority of that time, it's been fine, right? It, it's worked really well. Uh, and, but then you have days like today. It's just, I I don't know what's going on. Did I wake up on the wrong side of the bed? Somebody kicked me in the head or something? And I, like, I don't know what, what I did wrong. Did, I don't know what I did to deserve this, but Jesus. <sighs> okay, so that's it for this video. I've been ranting now for uh, minutes. I don't know how well this video was edited it may not have been edited at all because i haven't installed kaden live yet and i i should go do that i'm gonna go look i'm gonna do right now sudo and actually i will, I will show you my screen you can you, by the way that that failure right there is when i was trying to install the audacity version from the aur i don't even know what that i mean i don't know what that means it's some kind of make error but whatever it does it's just obviously that failed the the uh, uh, tenacity version failed as well because it couldn't find the dependencies i don't i don't maybe i did something wrong with the paro config i don't know it doesn't matter i gave up so i'm gonna do pseudo pacman right here on camera so if something goes wrong you guys can see this turns out i just needed to record everything that i was doing today if i recorded it maybe nothing would have went wrong so <laughs> the way i know um, oh, another thing that I tried to do today is tried to set the default browser. Couldn't figure out how to do that. Like I tried, tried. I've done that many times. Like use the the either XDG open settings or the MIME type thing, and that's usually the way it goes. But it didn't want to do it today. I don't know why. Linux hates me. So, anyways, that's it for this video. I don't have any of my normal scenes here, so just. If you're a pay if you're one of my Patreon pa supporters, thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. I truly do appreciate it. If you're a supporter on YouTube, thank you as well. Uh, I don't have your names at the end, unfortunately, today. I don't have that scene set up, and uh, if I'm gonna hop, I'm not gonna bother doing it now. So, but anyways, thanks for all your support. If you want, you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. Follow me on Mastodon. All those links will be in the video description. You can uh, tune in tomorrow. Hopefully, there will be a video if I don't switch to Windows. So. Thanks, everybody, for watching. See you next time.